Hello everyone, it's Jen from Old Tinker Studio. Welcome to the second Blender 2.8 tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be exploring the Blender 2.8 beta viewport, viewport shading, and units. All the relevant links are in the description below. Let's start with the viewport. The grid floor in the perspective view is now different. If you look at the grid that is closer to you, you notice that the grid lines are further apart and they appear a bit thicker. The grid lines that are further from you appear closer together and they fade off into the distance. How you select the vertices, edges, and faces of an object has changed. If you want to select only vertices, you either click on the vertex icon or use the number 1 at the top of your keyboard. To select only edges, again you select either the edge icon or the number 2 at the top of your keyboard. To select only faces, you can click on the face icon or use the number 3 at the top of your keyboard. The new overlays options allows you to quickly turn just about anything on or off in the viewport. The gizmo option refers to the gizmo in the upper right hand corner which can be used to rotate the scene. You can also turn on or off any grids as well as individual axes. You can also change the scale and the subdivisions of your grid. You can hide any text info, which is in the upper left hand corner. You can turn on or off any annotations and you can hide or unhide the 3D cursor. You can also hide various objects like extras, for example, the camera and the light, relationship lines, the outline selected, any bones, motion paths, or origins. Under the geometry section, you can control the wireframe, meaning how much of the wireframe is visible at any one time. Backface culling makes it easier to select vertices, edges, or faces when in wireframe mode. The face orientation shows you which direction the normals are facing. Motion tracking is used for animation. We'll talk more about that in a later video. These are the basic overlays, but the options will change depending upon which workspace you are in and what object you have selected. The shading options allow you to choose the lighting, the background color, and other options such as the x-ray, the shadow, and the outline. Again, these options will change depending upon the workspace and mesh options such as solid or wireframe. Blender 2.8 also has an x-ray mode. This is what was called limited selection in 2.7. This will allow you to see your entire mesh even if you're in solid mode. Now let's talk about viewport shading. Next to the x-ray mode you have four viewpoint shading modes. Also note that if you hit your Z key, that you can access these modes via a Pi menu. The first mode is wireframe, which shows your mesh in wireframe mode. Next is solid, which shows your mesh in a solid mode without any texture or material. You can, however, change the shading to change the lighting color and background affecting the mesh. Third is look dev, 
which allows you to see colors, materials, or textures. So if we put a quick material on here, give it a red color. Now you can see the red that is affecting your simple cube. Fourth is the actual rendered mode, which allows you to see what your scene will look like when it's rendered. Now remember that the default render engine in Blender 2.8 is Eevee, but you can actually still use Cycles Render. If you go under your camera tab, you can select which render engine you want to use. So you can use Eevee or you can use Cycles. One of the great things about Blender 2.8 is that either of these render engines is very good and they're both very, very fast. Okay, so now let's talk about units. The old default unit in previous versions of Blender were Blender units. In Blender 2.8, the default unit of measure is metric. In the Scene tab, you will find the Units section. Metric is the default unit, but you can also use the Imperial, which is inches and feet. If you use the metric system, you can change your length to meters, centimeters, etc. And that is what Blender will then use throughout the scene. If you're using the Imperial unit system, then you can actually change your length to feet or inches or even miles. And then that is what Blender will use throughout your scene. The adaptive choice that you'll see under either metric or imperial will allow you to see various measurements depending on how zoomed in or zoomed out you are. In edit mode, you actually have measurement overlays. You can turn on your edge length, your edge angle, your face area, or your face angle. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Again, this series is just going to be a quick overview of 2.8, just to get you started if you're new to 2.8. If you follow along with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, please tweet me your creations. The link is in the description. If you have any questions or suggestions for tutorials, please leave a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a good day.